Father, we come to you this evening as I'm losing Ohio, thanking you for all the blessings you bestow upon us as a city. We ask you to continue to bless the residents of the city of Norfolk, and especially those persons who have little or nothing or nothing at all. We ask you to let your kind hand be upon those communities who might be affected by Hurricane Irene as she moves up the coast. We ask you to give us the ability to do this job in a fair and just manner. These are all the blessings we ask in that name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. The clerk will please call the roll. Mr. Burford? Here. Mr. Protegiru? Here. Mr. Riddick? Here. Mr. Smeagle? Here. Dr. Wibley? Here. Ms. Williams? Here. Wynn? Here. Mr. Frame? Here. The motion is to dispense with the reading of the previous of the minutes of the previous meeting, please. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Norfolk City Council Chambers. We're glad to have all of you here. For your benefit, the uh, way that we will proceed with tonight's meetings, with tonight's meeting, is the first thing we're going to do is take up public hearings. He there been. are um, yeah. four of them on uh, tonight's agenda, and then we'll move directly to the consent agenda. There are three, four, there are five items there. The council actually can vote on all of those matters with one vote. Uh, at the conclusion of the of that vote, we'll move directly to the regular agenda, and there are a number of, of items there. Um, about 20 of them. Uh, we'll vote on all of these matters in just the way that they are numbered on the printed docket. Uh, at the conclusion of the regular agenda, if any member of the public would like to address the City Council on a non-agenda item, that's, uh, that's something that's not on the printed docket. You'll be given that opportunity. Yep. But in order to have your name called, you must first sign a slip of paper, which the clerk has made available in the in the area, the lobby out behind the conference, uh, behind the city council chamber, so I can call your name. She'll give me the paper. Um, there are no ceremonial matters tonight, and so we'll move directly, please, then to public hearing number one. Public hearing one scheduled for this day pursuant to action of council on July 12, 2011, under state law. Public notice having been inserted in the local press by the city clerk on the application of Norfolk Redevelopment and Housing Authority to close a 30 foot wide, unimproved portion of East Ocean View Avenue from First Bay Street running eastwardly approximately 145 feet. And the Planning Commission by 4 0 vote recommends approval. Okay, we have uh, three members of the public who were signed up to actually answer any questions if anyone has any. We have Peter Oberly the, from the Housing Authority. We have Silvio Man, Mancone, who's the developer, um, and the proponent, the architect for the proponent, Eugene Thompson. There are no other members of the public who were signed up to address the matter. No one's here to oppose it. Council has any questions or All right, call the roll then. I have an ordinance closing, vacating, and discontinuing a portion of Ocean View. Um, Avenue at First Bay Street and accepting the dedication of a public easement. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? No. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing two, please. Public hearing two scheduled for this day pursuant to action of council on July 2011 under state law. Public notice having been inserted in the local press by the city clerk on the application of First Bay Development to A, amend the general plan from medium density residential to high density residential. B, amend the zoning ordinance to reduce the required size for planned development districts to three acres. C, amend the zoning ordinance to create the First Bay Plan Development District. And D, change the zoning from R8 one family and R12 medium density multiple family to PDMU First Bay District, a property located at 2101, 2107, 2117, 2137, and 2143 East Ocean View Avenue, and 9634, um, and other 9600 addresses, and 9601 First Bay Street, and uh, 59600 block. Uh, uh, addresses on 2nd Bay Street. Okay. And the Planning Commission uh, recommends approval. Okay. We have two folks signed up to speak. One is the, is, uh, the proponent, the developer, Silvio Mancone, and the other one is Mr. Jack Frost, who's, who is an opponent. 
Um, if Mr. Frost, if you'll come to the podium and um, give us your name and address and try to limit your remarks to three minutes, please. <clears throat> my name is um, Roger L. Frost. To all my friends, I'm Jack. Um, I wanted to speak against this rezoning. Um, I am not against apartments. They, they uh, are a very necessary and functional part of our city. And I can assure you that if you vote against this, it will come back. My experience has been that it will come back in a much better form. Less density, uh, better parking, landscaping, all the things that's going to be necessary to make this a better project than what we have here. A quote that I like to start off with is, those who fail to learn from the mistakes of their predecessors are destined to repeat them. All of you are too young to remember some of the history of Ocean View. About 40 years ago, the, the Navy came to the city council and threatened them and said, we need more low-income units in the city, particularly for our first three grades. They just are, are not able to get sufficient quarters in the city of Norfolk. And if you don't, we're going to start moving forces out of the city. It scared the bejabers out of the city council. And at that time, the mayor, I think it was Roy, I mean Mr. Martin, came to the uh, executor of the planning commission, Phil Steadfast. Phil was a very competent, uh, forceful gentleman. He'd been there for a long time and he knew his job well. I often felt that we were working for Phil rather than him working for us. And Phil looked over the city and looked at Ocean View. At that time, Ocean View was housed just about the way it was when the city annexed Towner's Creek. It was composed of single family detached homes throughout the, the whole area. Phil change the zoning of swaths of Ocean View to RR1 and RR2. That was a res resort residential. And the zoning, just as is being proposed for here tonight, greatly reduced the, um, the quality of what the residentials were, were being required. It increased the density considerably and a lot of small things like um, front doors could be facing the side yard and, and re reduce the amount of parking required. The net effect of that, after that major downgrading, was there was a building frenzy of builders who came into the ocean view, tore down single family detached homes and built apartments. Mr. Frost, you have to... Can I do faster? Yeah, well, how about your three minutes? Well, you all know what East Beach looked like. And if you drive the back streets of Ocean View, you'll still see single family homes interspaced among apartments. Right. At that, at that time, I sat on the planning commission. I had no idea what the effect of it was going to be. I sat where Mr. Burford is, and of my seven years on there, when not realizing the effect of it. That was the only vote that I made that I regretted, and I still do. I don't, Paul, well, may I hand out something to the- Sure, sure, but Jack, we have a long night tonight. We have to Yeah, I know you do. Thank you. <laughs> sure. That's good. Um, Mr. Frost, but Jack, okay. you're going you're gonna to have to sum up, really. 
Okay. This particular project is in census tract 6501. That currently has 77.6% rentals. Only 22% are <coughs> owner-occupied houses. So uh, roughly eight out of every 10 residents in that area are already in a rental. And that's not an illness, that's an epidemic. And it creates, as you will notice from your the chart that I'm handing out, it creates a concentration of low rent apartments creates social cost, considerably more than the real estate taxes you're going to get from the police, from the schools, from social services. That particular chart is a demonstration of the clients used by Community Services Board. All right, thank you, Jack. Appreciate it. One more comment. No, two more comments. I'll leave you. Uh, uh, and you're making a big attempt to do something with the Texas streets now. I warn you that what you're doing, you're, you're moving Denby Park to Ocean View. Okay, and Jack, that's plenty. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks. All right, uh, Mr. Mancone, please. Silvio Mancone. Good evening, Sylvia Mancone, uh, 621 Woodstock Road, Virginia Beach, uh, current property owner at uh, Ocean View, East Ocean View First Bay. Uh, I've been involved with this project in this area since 1999, working with the East Ocean View community, uh, straightening out the community, working and helping the community come along. And I like East Ocean View, I always have. This project has come about, I've been involved in with this project for about five years now. I have met with all the civic groups. I've, I've had numerous meetings, numerous discussions, numerous reevaluation, redesigns. Finally, I've gotten all the support from the, uh, from the community. They've come around and we've incorporated a lot of their ideas, their concepts. <coughs> Mr. Frost, I don't remember seeing him at the, at the meetings, so I, I can't address his input. Other than, and I can't address his history, uh, but I can have my architect, Eugene Thompson, who I signed up, I, I don't recall reading his name, but discuss any technical discussions or anything further on along those lines. I'm sorry I didn't see his, his thing here. All right, any questions? All right, thank you. Like and I was going to let Tommy. Sure. Um, I, I just wanted to say, you know, when I first heard about this project in East Ocean View, I didn't think that it was a good idea. Um, and I met with Silvio and um, explained to him that he needed to go to the <coughs> civic leagues in that area because this property happens to be on the border of three civic leagues. And as Councilman Wynn will tell you, it's probably our three toughest civic leagues on that side of the city. They scrutinize every single project that comes through that area. East Ocean View, Bayview Civic League, which I believe is the largest civic league in the, in the city, uh, and Cottage Line Civic League. And uh, they did make comments to Mr. Mancone, um, and he went back and made adjustments on that property. He has acquired blighted apartment buildings, um, and there is no future in that area for single-family homes. And one of the things that I've talked with Mr. Duke about is that in order for East Ocean View to move forward on that side is that we have to consider mixed-use density. It's not going to be another East Beach. Um, and this project complements um, a future with Bay Oaks Park, um, possibly the property next to it with single family homes. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, if three civic leagues, the toughest, um, scrutinize this <laughs> the way that they did and are supportive of it. And that's why I told Mr. Mancone that if he got the community's approval and support of this, um, that I would support it. And he did. Um, and I think that it, w it becomes a gateway for that area. If you look at the uh, uh, Ocean View Corridor, um, that area is uh, kind of like a little downtown area, mm -hmm. um, and I think that uh, this project will um, be a benefit for that area. Um, I do want to note, though, that we are changing the density, and that's always been a concern in Ocean View. And I think that uh, whether I'm on council in 2014 or not, um, that whoever's still here, that we need to remember that, you know, if this project doesn't move forward, that we need to rezone it back. If if the project doesn't move forward, to not allow another developer to come through and put something in there that would not be 
desirable for that community. Um, and that's one thing that I think that we should remember when we, we do allow this to happen. Uh, but Sylvia runs, uh, I mean, those, those apartments, we don't have any issues out of the apartments. He has 75 of them. There are no issues in those apartments at all. We never hear any of crime issues over that way. Um, and I think that uh, it would be good for our community. Well, I'll only comment, he covered most of it, though. He, is, he has responded to all <coughs> the concerns of the neighborhood, the planning department, the Civic League. And I can assure you, Jack, that we're not returning East Ocean View to where, or Ocean View to where it was. So. And nothing like the Denby Park, Texas streets. We're very aware of the mistakes we made in the past, and I assure you that we won't. We're not making them again. Thank you, Sylvia. Okay. Any other comments, questions? Okay. Call the roll, please. I have four ordinances with this item, Mr. President. Okay. <clears throat> the first is an ordinance to amend the general plan of Norfolk 1992 so as to change the land use designation for properties located at 2101 through 2143 East Ocean View Avenue. 9612 through 9634 First Bay Street, 9601 through 9631 First Bay Street, 9623 through 9627 Second Bay Street, and 9612 and 9622 Bay Street for medium density residential to high density residential. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? No. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. The second is an ordinance, <coughs> section 27-2 of the zoning ordinance for the city of Norfolk 1992, so as to reduce the minimum size of a planned development district from five acres to three acres, dispensed with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? No. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Webley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. The third is an ordinance to amend Chapter 27 of the Zoning Ordinance of the City of Norfolk, 1992, so as to create the First Bay Plan Development District. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? No. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. And the fourth is an ordinance to rezone properties located at 2101 through 2143 East Ocean View Avenue, 9612 through 9634 First Bay Street. 9601 through 9631 First Bay Street, 9623 through 9627 Second Bay Street, and 9612 and 9620 Second Bay Street from R8 One Family and R12 Multiple Family District to PDMU First Bay Plan Development District. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? No. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, public hearing uh, three, please. Public hearing three scheduled for this day pursuant to action of council on June 28, 2011, under state law, public notice having been inserted in the local press by the city clerk on the application of the city planning commission for a zoning text amendment to allow single family homes on 37 and a half foot wide lots in R11 moderate density multiple family and R12 medium density multiple family districts and by five zero vote planning commission recommends approval. <clears throat> okay, there are no members of the public here to address the council in this matter. Okay, if there are no questions, the clerk will call the roll, please. I have an ordinance to amend and reordain sections 4-11.4, 4-12.4, and 4-12.5 in tables 4A and 15A of the zoning ordinance of the city of Norfolk 1992 in order to allow for the development of compact one-family dwellings on atypically deep lots in the R11 and R12 multiple-family residential zoning districts. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing four, please. Public hearing four scheduled for this day pursuant to action of council on July 12, 2011 under state law, public notice having been inserted in the local press by the city clerk on the application of Luna Development Services, LLC, by Michael Glenn, A, to change the zoning from R12 medium density multiple family district to conditional C2 quarter commercial district at 2601 Granby Street, B, for a special exception for off-lot parking at 2609 Granby Street and 109 West 27th Street, and C, for a special exception mixed use at 2601 Granby Street by 5-0 vote planning commission recommends approval all right um, the architect Robin Thomas is here Robin are you there answer questions if anyone has any in 
Rodney Jordan has listed himself as a proponent. We're glad to hear from you, Mr. Jordan, but there's no, there's no one signed up in opposition. Does the council have any questions? Okay, you can call the roll, please. I have three ordinances for this item. The <coughs> first is an ordinance to rezone property located at 2601 Granby Street from R12 to conditional C2 district. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protozero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. The second is an ordinance granting a special exception to permit off-lot parking on property located at 2609 Granby Street and 109 West 27th Street. <coughs> Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Webley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. And the third is an ordinance granting a special exception to permit the development of a structure having mixed uses on property located at 2601 Granby Street. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Okay, the consent agenda. There are five matters here. Would any member of the council wish to have any one of these matters con considered separately? Okay, uh, the consent agenda. Call the roll. Approve the consent agenda, Mr. Burfitt. Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R1, please. R1 is an ordinance granting the sum of $925,000 to the YMCA of Southampton Roads for the construction of a YMCA family center in Park Place in the city of Norfolk, appropriating the grant funds, authorizing their expenditure, and authorizing the city manager to enter into a grant agreement with the YMCA of Southampton Roads. Okay. There are a number of folks who have signed up to address the council on this matter. Um, a, a couple of things. First of all, when I call your name, if you come to the podium, please, Identify yourself for the record by giving us your full name and your present home address, and then please limit your remarks to three minutes. I'm going to try to be a little more forceful here on this. There are a lot of people here. Somebody's, by the way, somebody's got to go first in this discussion, and somebody's got to go last. So the fact that you may be called towards the end of the line here is not meant as any anything other than the fact that that's the way the, the, uh, the numbers are coming to me, the slips are coming to me. Uh, a couple of other things here. Um, I, the council understands that this matter has been the subject of a good deal of discussion both in these chambers and in the community. Um, w we know and we expect that you will treat every speaker with uh, respect. Um, any displays of emotion of, you know, of, uh, of unfavorable or even favorable, we'd appreciate you not do that here. Everybody here has got a right to say whatever they want without being without being called out by some member of the public. So. If uh, we you know, appreciate your treating everybody um, with uh, with respect, so um, we have a number of people who have signed up who are proponents, and a number of people are opponents. What I'll do is call a proponent, and then an opponent, and, a pro and then we'll we'll go like that until we run out of, uh, I guess, uh, proponents, and there there are more opponents who have signed up. So, all right, the first uh, name then is Rodney Jordan. Uh, good evening. My name is Rodney Jordan, 304 West 36th Street. I'm joined here by my older daughter, Paige, and my younger daughter, Bria, also 304 West 36th Street. Uh, what you have before you today is really a simple reprogramming request. Uh, there's uh, funds that were appropriated to the Park Place community for passive uses, uh, uh, play park, uh, green space, and things of that type. And what the community did in working with the YMCA over the last three years is uh, have a series of meetings. We had uh, focus groups, we had um, civic league meetings, we had uh, studies done, and what we determined was that we could have a significant bang for our buck by supporting this YMCA project. In many ways, it's, it's not that different than from what's been happening with the Croc Center that we're now champion. It's a <laughs> public-private uh, investment, Mr. Burford. Uh, we worked together, we said we wanted high-quality opportunities in, in this city. And so as we uh, uh, work together to do some things with the Croc Center, we now have some of the same donors who are willing to come forward and have a public-private partnership uh, in this neighborhood. I also want to, um, to you know, we we're talking about buildings. 
It's been a lot of talk about children. It's one of the reasons why I asked my children to join me today, uh, because what this uh, project is really about is about strong families. We know that we have a wonderful uh, parks and rec uh, facility in our neighborhood. We know we have wonderful facility with the library. Uh, we think that other facilities, such as the Boys and Girls Club, if they become available, we think that would be a great addition as well. But I just wanted to ask, uh, there's some young people here today, the Digital Connectors, if you please stand. These uh, young people are from Park Place, they're from Central Bramilton, they're from Huntersville, they're from all across the city. They are right now involved in YMCA programming. They are uh, learning technology skills, workforce development skills, and as part of their commitment, and as part of the commitment that the YMCA has, each of them is given back 56 hours of community service to the community, as well as training over 900 residents in digital literacy in this city. So this initiative that we're talking about in Park Place is not about entitlement, it's not about somebody giving us something, it's about what this community can give back and how this community can build upon the strengths that we have in the neighborhood and attract more private investment into Park Place. So I appreciate uh, your support and giving me the opportunity to speak. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you all for coming down. It's good to see you. Uh, Mr. Venuto, Ben Venuto. And Mr. Venuto will be followed by Wardell Brown. <clears throat> Uh, my name is Ben Venuto, uh, 805 Fontaine Avenue, Ingleside, uh, neighborhood of Norfolk. I'm the general manager of One Life Fitness. <clears throat> As you know, the YMCA is a nonprofit organization, which means they pay no income tax, sales tax, property tax, personal property tax, or people tax. My understanding of the definition of nonprofit is given to entities that take the place of government service, thus reducing the, the burden on the government. <clears throat> the YMCA of Southampton Roads neither acts like nor deserves this nonprofit status. Uh, in a recent pilot article, uh, CEO Chuck Harris, Harris, who makes over $300,000 a year, was quoted as saying, Southampton Roads is an underserved fitness market. Um, I know he's right over here, uh, over my right shoulder, and I would love for him to elaborate on that, uh, that comment at some point. Um, I know he, is, he did not make any mention of helping the underserved or the underprivileged. He sounds like any other for-profit gym owner. <clears throat> As a nonprofit, their tax returns are a matter of public record. I recently obtained a 2009 copy uh, from their headquarters. Tried to go in there today and get their 2010, but apparently it was unavailable. Um, it's very interesting to see the total revenue each of the past two years at $45 million. They have net assets or fund balances of $27.5 million, up $5 million from the previous year. Why would we use hard-earned taxpayer money to overpay for a piece of land currently generating tax revenue, only to give it away to a taxi rodent high-end health club that pays no taxes? Um, please feel free to interject and help me seek uh, an answer to a couple of these questions um, at any time. Per their tax returns, why would a nonprofit organization spend tens of thousands of dollars a year on lobbying? Why would a nonprofit organization pay their CEO $300,000 plus retirement benefits? All on the tax return. Why would a nonprofit organization not put in writing the number of jobs and memberships they are going to give to the citizens of Park Place? Why does a nonprofit organization spend over a million dollars a year on travel, conferences, and conventions? And this is probably uh, a better question for uh, Mr. Harris. Why is we, YMCA getting away from their <coughs> core Christian values and changing their name to just the Y? The YMCA clearly acts as a for-profit business. Uh, with $27 million in net assets, why is YMCA asking for handouts from every city in Hampton Roads? <clears throat> They've gone from enriching the community to enriching themselves. Without a commitment in writing, it's going to be the same old why. I give them credit for being good at what they do, which is fleecing the communities they are in and not helping the underprivileged. The citizens of Park Place deserve better. Get this money to the rec center or the boys and girls clubs. Thank you, Mr. Veneto. Can I you. give you guys his tax return? Sure, you can give it to him right over here. Um, Mr. Brown, Bordell Brown, followed by Rick Zimmerman, please. 
Good evening. My name is Wardell Brown. I'm at 434 West 34th Street, uh, north of Virginia, in the Park Place area. Uh, unfortunately, the gentlemen begin to talk about money, and we're talking about lives. I'm pretty sure everyone here, they had people in their lives to, to tell them something, and they always remembered that. My father always told me, he said, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. And what that did, it brought me back to the book of Jeremiah, uh, Nehemiah, rather, where they were building the walls. And yet, he had two adversaries that said, don't do it, it's going to fall down. Just, just don't worry about them. Unfortunately, when you look at young children and you see that they need help, why would, you, why would anyone want to negate that from them? Why would, why would anybody want to stop them from that? I mean, it's a lot of kids out here that, that needs help. It's not all about money. It's about saving a life. Young kids need guidance. How do we know this place won't work? How do we know? We have faith. We must have faith. If we have people to come along and help and come along and build that wall as families, you never know what can happen. Denzel Washington came from the YMCA or the Boys Club. Look at him now. It's no telling what these kids will do or what they become. So I believe that this place really needs to be, to be in business. I really believe that a lot of people, if they would just take a chance, because people took chances on you all. I know that. They took chances on me. A lot of people said you may not amount to anything, but sometime faith without works is dead. If you don't see no change, I mean, whose fault is that if you don't give that change a chance? I mean, it's a lot of us, a lot of us, no children that needs help. All they need is guidance. And if they do get that YMCA, I'm going to be there to help them because I have a heart for young people. I'm a Sunday school teacher also. And I know if you don't change, the process of not changing is death. We cannot stay in the same predicament and say the same old thing. We have to do something about it. Our president said we must change. We need to change. And I believe if we would just let that take place, it'll happen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Rick Zimmerman, Mr. Zimmerman, followed by Jim Dilley. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening. City Council members, citizens of Norfolk. My name is Rick Zimmerman. I'm CEO of Axel LLC. It's a consulting company that works in Hampton Roads, Raleigh, North Carolina, Washington, D.C., and San Diego, California. I'm here to tell a simple story. Did you, did you, your address, please. Yes, it's 2244 Oak Street, Virginia Beach. Okay, thank you. I'm uh, here to tell a simple story. It's about two girls, one named Molly and one named Susie. They were leaving for summer break and decided to start a lemonade stand. So Molly and Susie decided that they were going to go to Sam's Club and buy their products. They put together the lemons, the sugar, bottled water, and cups. Molly in one cart, Susie in another. When Molly went to check out, she paid $100. She went to write the check, and the cashier said, sorry, you got to pay sales tax. So Molly had to pay $107 for that product. Susie, with the same products, went to the cashier, and she only had to pay $100. Did not have to pay sales, because her lemonade stand was set up as a 5013C non-for-profit. So both of them went, built their lemonade stand, and started selling lemonade. About two days into selling, Molly had a visitor. He was the tax guy from Norfolk. The tax gentleman said, Molly, I need to tell you, you got to pay property tax on the land you're selling the lemonade's on. You need to pay sales tax on the, the lemonade. You need to say pay personal property tax on the stand. And also, don't forget, you got to pay income tax to the city, the state, and the federal government on the income that you make. Well, Molly was shocked. She said, I'm going to go talk to Susie, find out what Susie's paying. She goes down the street to talk to Susie. Susie goes, ah, you don't have to worry about any of those taxes, or I don't have to worry about any of those taxes. I'm a 5013C. I'm tax exempt. Molly asked, well, how did you do that? How did you become a 5013C? Well, I had to sign some documents that said, I won't have any profits. I'm a non-for-profit. Molly says, what are you going to do with all the money that you make? 
well, I'm going to pay myself a salary, call it a salary as expenses, and not call it income. And Molly says to Susie, well, how, how did you get by? What else did you have to do? How did you get by just doing that? She said, well, I had a guarantee that, <clears throat> excuse me, that I would give some of my lemonade free to some of the underprivileged folks. And Molly said, OK, how much lemonade? Well, I tell them I'm going to give them a lot, but I don't really put anything in writing, so I'm just going to give them a little bit. And it's a lot less than what I would pay in taxes. Here's the moral of the story. Um, I think I support, I've been involved with the YMCA in Raleigh, North Carolina, been involved with them in San Diego, support what they do. They're a great organization. My issue is if they're going to ask for tax revenue of $925,000, have them sign an affidavit that they will submit to giving free memberships to the kids at Park Place, because I agree with the gentleman what he said. we got to do something for the kids in Park Place. That's what the money's for. That's Thanks. what Mr. Um, Thank you, Mr. Zim. Mr. Uh, Batten did, so I appreciate you just looking at that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Dilley, followed by Kirk Aliani. Jim Dilley, 1430 Armistead Bridge, Norfolk. Um, I've been a resident of Norfolk and a member of the YMCA for the past 30 years. Um, I'm currently on the uh, board of directors of the, the, corporate, um, the corporate board. During that last 30 years, the YMCA has grown from one branch to now over 20 branches. And as you heard earlier, we currently have a budget of approximately $45 million. What you didn't hear in the earlier presentation was the amount of scholarship that we give every month and every year to our members. And I'm going to give you just last month's numbers, and these are only for the Norfolk Blocker YMCA. So these numbers aren't for the entire YMCA. Last month alone, we contributed to 1,382 households. The total dollar amount was $72,765. The average scholarship award was $52 per family. In 2011, so far this year, we have contributed $543,000 in scholarships to our members. And this, I believe, is one of the key reasons that the YMCA is a tax-exempt organization. The new proposed uh, YMCA in Park Place Center will offer numerous benefits to the community, including a new outdoor pool, we'll be able to teach kids to swim, We'll have families have a safe place uh, to play. There'll be a new teen center. Uh, we'll teach them leadership skills. We'll have tutorial and parenting classes. We'll have a fitness facility, stay and play activities for toddlers, and a gymatorium for the performing arts and young sports. The proposed YMCA and Park Place project includes over $13.5 million in philanthropic giving. We are here tonight to ask the council for a $925,000 grant that will provide the community with needed services. Uh, the YMCA can be the tipping point in this community. Our programs are designed to strengthen families. And in conclusion, our YMCA is ready, willing, and able to work with our funders, the city, the Civic League, and the community to make this project a reality. We ask for your support. For the record, sir, I want to correct you. It's not a swimming pool. It's a splash park. Splash pad, actually. It's not a swimming pool. It's an outdoor it's splash park. Pad. It's a pool. It's an outdoor pool. We were just told last week it was a splash pad. Now, is it a pool or a pad? It's an outdoor pool. It's, it's probably like the green bar one that has both. It's kind of we have others in, in the area that have already been built. Where it has only, a pool well, with a, say it, yeah. We had the conversation Thank last you. week. It was a splash pad. That's what right, that's well, what Chuck said. Chuck said a splash it's a pad. It's not, it's not 10 feet, but it's, it's not a pad. Tagaliani followed by Therese Patterson. Kirk Galliani, 1900 Monticello. As a taxpayer and business owner in Norfolk, I think it is fiscally reckless to give the Y almost $1 million of taxpayer money to purchase land that is currently paying tax, but it will not pay tax after the Y purchases it. Why? Because the Y doesn't pay tax, not property tax, not sales tax, not income tax, not the taxes that Norfolk citizens and Norfolk businesses pay. It's wrong. 
the Y brings in $45 million a year locally and $5 billion nationally. They don't need our hard-earned tax dollars and handouts from city council. When the Y opens, it will hurt many small businesses. Some will probably go out of business. Others will, pay, will bring in less revenue and pay less tax. Who will make up the difference? Yes, the taxpayers. Or will you have to cut city services such as police, fire, teachers, parks, recs, just to name a few? Even more troubling, I've heard it is not in the contract, and I've heard this, but I'm, I don't know because I haven't seen the contract, that it is not in writing how many memberships the Y will give to at-risk youth and how many memberships they will give to low-income housing or guaranteeing employing anybody from Park Place. Additionally, the city manager did a very poor job explaining the negative impact of the Y. He never said anything um, against the Y, even though there are many problems with it. The city manager should only give a non-biased background, giving only the facts and all the facts, which he did not. This vote must be delayed until the city council gets all the facts and after the contract with the Y spells out how many memberships they're going to give to at-risk youth and low-income families. And they should also put in writing how many jobs they will give to the people of Park Place. If not, it is just a gift, a million-dollar gift. Mr. Patterson. Thank you. Perez Patterson. Followed by Jerry Donnelly. Good evening, members of council. My name is Therese Patterson. I live at 527 West 36th Street, and I am proud to be the Park Place Civic League president. On behalf of the Civic League, I would like to express our unwavering and unanimous support for the Park Place YMCA Family Center. And I would like to ask the Civic League members and residents who have showed up this evening that support this development to please stand and applaud. Thank you. Thank you. A great deal of time has gone into considering the impact of this development on the public at large, the primary service area, and our community. Everything from traffic, employment, economic, social, and the environmental impact has been discussed and carefully considered. Over the past three years, the Civic League and the Y has had an active partnership. In many ways, this partnership exemplifies a new model of how organizations can work alongside residents and within communities. This process has gone beyond a simple assessment of community needs. The Y has gone through what I can only define as an enculturation that involves an understanding of where Park Place is now, where it has been, and what our future goals are. The Y has been actively involved in the visioning and engagement process, which is a resident-led process, uh, excuse me, a resident-led process to community planning that we did over the last two years. They have met with the CZB team, the consultant team that worked alongside the community during the visioning and engagement process. They have read the strategy, and they have a clear understanding of the direction and goals of the community. A Y satellite office was open on Collie Avenue so they could obtain feedback survey residents, solicit ideas, gather input to gauge the best selection of enriching programs and activities for Park Place. The, through the process, the Y plans to offer approximately 106 programs that covers youth development, healthy living, and social responsibility, including a five-star early childhood development center, which will be the first in the state of Virginia. The Y is unique in that the haves and the haves, have nots have access to the same first-rate facility and programming. The Y has also had a representative at every single Civic League meeting for the last three years. To ensure that the Park Place residents benefit from the development of, the, of uh, this development, 
a community benefits agreement has been brokered between the Y and the Civic League. And I have it here if anyone would like to see it. A community benefits agreement is a project specific negotiated agreement between a developer and a community coalition, <coughs> excuse me, that outlines the project's contributions to the community and ensures community support for the project. The main elements of the community be benefits agreement supplying approximately 30 plus employment opportunities to qualify Park Place residents, the Y has agreed to foster access to job openings, descriptions, and job requirements. The Y has agreed to facilitate the introduction between the Y contractor, hired and qualified local and minority contracting businesses and laborers residing in primary service areas in Park Place. We support the reallocation of these funds for this project. We believe the Y is the best selection for our community. Thank, Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, Donnelly, followed by Walter Potter. Uh, my name is Jerry Donnelly. I'm from Virginia Beach at 2108 Pleasant Acres Court. I'll try to keep mine under three minutes. I'm a, a partner in a tax paying business here in Norfolk, and I'm asking you tonight to defer the important decision on the name of transparency and fairness. On August 5th, I filed a Freedom of Information Act requesting information from the city that it had on the mayor, city council members, the city manager, and city attorney. My request was received by the city, and 10 days later, they informed me that in this information would cost me about $500. I'd have to pay in person in this building, third floor, room 302, and they'd give me the information in a couple days. I delivered the check the very next day. I have proof of that here. Since then, and over the past two weeks, I've made dozens of phone calls and requests for this information. Each time I was told it was being collected and they'd have it here shortly. They told me last two weeks ago they'd have it before last week's city council meeting. And as of 5 o'clock tonight, I've received nothing. When I walked in here at 640 this evening, Mr. Batcher, who I've never met before, found out who I was and said he had a box of information here for me. The Freedom of Information Act ensures that citizens have the right to inspect and copy of public records. Governments are also typically bound by the duty to publish and promote openness. The City of Norfolk's website states, and I quote, if the custodian cannot fulfill the request for records within the required five days by law, it says that the only custodian can get a seven day extension, but only after stating and writing within the original five days why their extra time is needed. Failure to respond to a FOIA request within five days is considered a denial of access and a violation of law. I received nothing until 6.40 tonight. I've talked to, uh, I have the proof here from city council, and I talked to Mary in communications three or four times today that it was promised and it was coming. In the name of fairness, I ask that you please defer this until your next meeting. My request for the information was legal and proper, and I feel we have a strong case against the city for failure to provide any information when plenty of time was available to respond. What did you FOIA? Excuse me? What did you ask for? I asked for information on the city manager, the city mayor, the attorney, uh, information about the YMCA, the project, what they're presenting what they're going to build, what they're offering. All right, thank you. Can I give this to? Sure. sure. Walter Potter. What happened? Why did it take so long? Followed by John Galliani. <laughs> we need the refund on this money. Mr. Mayor, members of City Council, I'm Walter Potter. I live at 1938. Woodside Lane, Virginia Beach, Virginia. I'm the chairman of the, board of the board of the local YMCA of Southampton Roads. I'm here tonight to ask for your appro approval for the proposed grant agreement between the city of Norfolk and the YMCA to build a new YMCA family center for the Park Place neighborhood. I'd like to tell you a few things about the Y in general. I'd like to read you our cause-driven vision statement. The YMCA of Southampton Roads is committed to strengthening the foundations of our community 
by significantly increasing the number of healthy families through nurturing the potential of every child and teen, improving the community's health and well-being, and giving back and providing support to our neighbors. Our three areas of impact are youth development, healthy living, and social responsibility. A little bit of information about our profile in general. You, you heard about the blocker downtown Y. We have 20 branches and a camp stretching from the eastern shore to the outer banks. We also have branch in Franklin and Elizabeth City. We have just under 100 and 1,000 members. We have 34,000 members under the age of 18. 24% of our members receive scholarships. In 2011, this year so far, over $3 million has been provided in scholarships. Child care services are provided to more than 3,000 children per day. Swim lessons are taught to thousands. Hundreds of teenagers attend our leadership development programs and our youth sports programs. Our first T program is active in four cities, including the city of Norfolk. These are just a sample of our Y programs. As part of our 2011 to 2013 corporate plan, the YMCA Board of Directors, after a three-year study funded by the Landmark and the Hampton Roads Community Foundation, voted to build a new family center in the Park Place community. It is very important to us that we provide the same quality facility and services in Park Place as we provide our other facilities. We feel our pro proposed facility will make a significant impact in the lives of the children and families in the Park Place neighborhood and the surrounding communities. Our board and the Park Place Civic League have jointly adopted, you just heard some of the points of it, we have jointly adopted a community benefits resolution that pledges both organizations will work together to expand employment opportunities for Park Place residents, incorporate green design techniques during construction and operation of the building. We will promote the new facility as a first rate facility available to all families and individuals and we will incorporate members of the Civic League on the local branch board of managers. We ask for your consideration. We thank you for your consideration in Park Place Civic League, YMCA. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> John Galliani, followed by Alton Robinson. Hello. My name is John Galliani. I'm business owner, 1900 Monticello Avenue in Norfolk, Virginia. I've got a, a couple things to say, and part of it will change based on some what I heard tonight and don't want to reiterate too much of what other people are saying. But probably the first thing that, and probably the most concerning thing I have to say is I've been approached by a lot of business owners that are really concerned about this, about the erosion of the tax base. And these business owners said, you know, please speak up, be loud, be heard, but we're afraid to talk. We're afraid to get up there and say that because we do business in the city. And we don't want to be, have some retribution against us or something to hurt our business. And, you know, the United States of America is pretty scary that people don't feel like they can get up and speak when they think something's wrong because some, they're going to somehow get punished. So that's kind of the first thing I have. And I appreciate everybody on both sides have gotten up to, to say what they, how they feel about this. So, you know, One Life, we believe in nonprofits. We believe in charities. They're an important part. They enrich communities. You know, we support a ton of them. We do a lot. We have a, we have a treadmill in one of our clubs at every mile that's rid, run on that treadmill. We donate to, to a breast cancer research and treatment. We support the Tour de Cure, the main supporter of that, that raises money for diabetes treatment. We raise money for baby William, who has health needs and parents who aren't able to meet all those needs. We have four kids here in Norfolk, a lot of different charities. And these are great charities, and they enrich the communities, and they're an important part. The difference, I think, here is they do enrich community, and I've, I've seen the why over the years transition from enriching communities to you know, today more enriching themselves. And we've all heard about how much the CEO pays himself, and that's not the only one. You look at their tax returns, there's a lot of other people pulling some very big salaries taken home out of there. That, in my mind, is pretty inconsistent with trying to give back and, and help communities. There's, they're a $45 million a year in, in revenue. Now, clearly, this isn't a charity that needs our money. They don't need the hard-earned tax dollars. They can pay it themselves. They have plenty of money in the bank. 
I'm not sure why they, they have their hand out here, but um, you know, when, they, when they compete with these businesses, and this has been said a little bit, but this piece of property that they're taking off the tax roll is going to lower the tax base. And once again, people said, who's going to make up for that? Is it all these people? Is it, are we going to cut our services some more? And something's got to happen there. When you lower the taxes, it's got to be made up. You've got to cut services again. Um, you know, in addition, they've talked a lot about we're going to work with the community, we're going to, we're going to bring people in, we're going to post jobs. And I think that's great. I think that's important. The problem is there's no commitment. How many jobs? What percent of the members? If it's not 50% of the jobs or 50% of the members, then it's for some other community. It's not for Park Place. So, you know, guarantee a number of people you're going you're gonna to help. If you really want to help Park Place, make them guarantee. How many people are you going to employ from Park Place? How many memberships? What percent of your memberships are you going to give to Park Place people? So thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Alton Robinson. Alton Robinson. He's here all the time. He's back there. Is he? Okay. Followed by Ernest Brooks. Put your other glasses on. Yeah. <laughs> Is that right? How many speakers do we have on there? Got another 20 or so. Good evening, um, Mayor Frame. My name is Alton Robinson. My address is 735 West 35th Street. I have my beautiful daughters, Amelita, Brianna, and Christina. The Y project is not a spring up overnight project. The Y has been working with the community and the civil league for several years. The community and the civil league has had several meetings to inform our elected officials of the proposed Y project and gain their support for the proposed YMC facility and park place. There is a false fear that the children of Park Place would not be able to enjoy the why and the programs offered there. Well, not only would the children have an opportunity to participate in the WISE programs, but the whole family can participate together. The why will help build strong families. The community for a long time has been working on a healthy family, healthy community, and healthy school initiative. And the full support of the council and its administration for the, for the proposed Y project will bring us one step closer to our goal of having healthy families, healthy communities, and healthy schools. The Y, the Y would be, I lost my train of thought because I was thinking about. Uh, Dr. Martin Luther King uh, Memorial that's coming up this weekend. And I was thinking about his dream along with my dream. So I'm gonna just share my dream because I don't want my time to run out. See, I have a dream too for my community. And the dream I have for my community, I believe the Y would help bring it to fruition as being an anchor in the location that is chose. And then we also visualize businesses being attracted right there along that corridor so that it will go down Grammar Street and link up with 35th Street and go back down to Carly Avenue and then link back down to Carly Avenue where all the other businesses are within the city so that our community will have a parameter of economic development. That was my dream, but I didn't put that in my speech, so that's why my thought was thrown off. But I just hope that uh, this council know that the community has been working diligently with the Y and the Y has been working diligently with the community to support this project. And we do have a CBA community benefit agreement that we've been working back and forth on to ensure that there will be economic development for the families in the Park Place community and also that the children and the families in Park Place will be served because I know for a fact that the Y does not turn anyone away. Thank you. Thank you. Ernest Brooks, thank you. Mr. Brooks. Followed by Carlos Howard. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests. My name is Ernest Brooks. I live in the Park Place area along with my wife, Latanya Brooks, at 432 West 35th Street. I'm presently employed after 28 years service with the Navy Exchange Service Command. 
on the other side of that coin, I teach martial arts. I've been involved in martial arts for over 40 years. In 1969, a young kid, African-American young boy in Greenville, North Carolina, was able to join the first boys club and girls club in Greensville, North Carolina. There was a student from my home, Brooklyn, New York, by the name of Jimmy Lewis, who was a student at Greensville, North Carolina, East Carolina University. He was involved in a karate program there in a karate club. Three of my friends who were practitioners in the martial art at that time, 13 and 14 years old, was given the privilege to join the boys club. And I had to leave North Carolina and come to Virginia. When I came to Virginia, my father introduced me who will become my uh, mentor and my present master in the martial arts. Here in Virginia, under my instructor, Harold Lee Hankins, who passed recently, about three weeks ago, I was able to attain the degree of third degree black belt in Taekwondo and Karate, and also train with his classmate under master and Sifu Kung Fu master, uh, David Meadows, who was a former Norfolk police officer and uh, arson investigator. Because of the, the chance I was given to join the Boys Club in Greensville, North Carolina, and coming here to Virginia, I was able to attain exceptional skills in martial arts, given the chance to attain self-confidence, discipline, honor, and integrity, and become a productive citizen here in the United States. Under my instructors, I have trained military personnel, Marines, Navy SEALs, and police officers. The kids in Park Place need a chance to develop their talents and their skills at the Boys Club. I'm not against progress. I'm not against the YMCA. I'm against all that is good and all that is uh, progression. In 2003 up to 2004, I was the self-defense instructor at the YMCA in downtown Norfolk, teaching a program, eight-week program for women self-defense in my Wing Chun Gung Fu style of self-defense tactics for ladies in the Tidewater Water area. The children, for me, as a martial art instructor, are our next generation to pass on my skill, my, my beliefs and ideology as a martial artist that will give them direction and discipline give them self-confidence, let them become productive citizens of society, becoming your law enforcement uh, personnel, your military personnel as, as well. So I'm saying, if you are able to fund the YMCA with $925,000, fund the Park Place Neighborhood Center as well. I'm sure Obama, President Obama, has allocated funds for other programs. Think about the kids in Park Place and at the Boys Club. Thank you for your Thank time. You. <clears throat> Carlos Howard, followed by Vernon Fareed. My name is Carlos Howard. My address is 436 West 35th Street, North Virginia. I am president of the 35th Street Merchants Association. Been a servant in the city of Norfolk publicly for the past 40 years. I am here tonight on behalf of the children again of Park Place, those children in which this Park Place Civic League missed, if you would mind standing, please. Thank you. And I'm also here in opposition to the why, and I'll tell you why. The why will not provide affordable child care. They will not promote, provide jobs in writing for the residents of Park Place. They will not provide in writing scholarships for the services to the community. Neither will they provide 
for African American builders and contractors. Neither will they pay property taxes, income taxes, sales taxes, or will not provide or any tangible services to the community other than a $15 million building project that will never produce any tangible resident revenues that are so desperately needed in a developing community like Park Place, but only to line political cronies' pockets. I ask this council to vote no to the funding of this project with municipal funds. If they can afford to, if the city can afford to pay uh, its teachers, fire, and police, then how is it that they're able to come up with funds to pay uh, for this type of funding? I am appalled that there has not been any money found for these resources. Why can't there be money found to support a Park Place Youth Center? The material that I just gave you was delivered to the city manager's office on July 29th, as you, Mr. Mayor, instructed me to do, so that you all could take this and go over it doing your uh, reprieve. It did not happen. We've done everything humanly possible and everything that has been asked by this council to do to provide an outlet for these children. I'm not here for the why. I'm here for these children. And if you would see that has been so eloquently put together, a proposal that includes a budget that will only cost a fraction of what this proposal of the why is asking. I'm asking you that what is the justification for giving nearly a million dollars to a, a projects that's only been assessed two weeks prior to that at $237,000. This is not the highest and best use for this property for a developing community like Park Place. Thank you. Word of parade. Thank you. Followed by Raymond Gohagen. Yes, my name is Vernon M. Fareed. I reside at 424 West 35th Street in the city of Norfolk. Mr. Mayor and members of the council, uh, please be aware that in addition to my residence, I also own property on 35th Street. And I serve as the religious leader of the mosque on this same corridor. As a result of the aforementioned facts, I'm sure that I have as much interest in the community as anyone else. I'm very concerned about our children and young adults because they represent our future. In addition to various efforts by several individuals, there are some ongoing efforts by a few institutions in Park Place to address the needs of our children. As you know, we have the Park Place Community Center, and it addresses many of the social, recreational, and educational needs of our children. I believe that it is a mischaracterization to say that the children of Park Place have nowhere to go and nothing to do. Since becoming aware of the plans to build a YMCA within the Park Place neighborhood, I have anticipated its coming. I strongly encourage the council to give its support to the YMCA building project, and I believe that it will not only be a great asset to our neighborhood, but also to the city of Norfolk at large. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, Raymond, is it Gohagen or Gogan? followed by Kia Thomas. Okay. Good evening, Mayor. My name is Raymond Lee Gohagen. I live 729 West 28th Street. I came to talk about the Boys and Girls Club. I grew up in the Boys and Girls Club. I was around, let's see, like, 12, 13, when they closed it down. I joined the Boys and Girls Club in Park Place around when I was five years old. I played basketball for them <coughs> and everything else. I still have everything, trophies, everything I want. And I'll be hoping that y'all would listen and open the Boys and Girls Club back because it's a building of memory and 
it's a waste of money for you to open a Y up and there's already a building there. And all the tax dollars going towards the Y should be going for something that that's good for the kids in Park Place. A lot of kids, a lot of parents probably can't afford to buy memberships and stuff for the Y and everything else. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Kia Thomas. Kia Thomas, followed by Travis Davis. Good afternoon, Mayor Frame, um, members of City Council. Um, I reside, currently reside at uh, 625 Gulf Street, um, the Church Street, Princess Anne area, Huntersville section of Norfolk. Um, since about the age of six, um, that's been my place of residence. Um, every day before that, uh, I was a uh, resident of a park place and uh, a member of the Boys and Girls Club. Um, for many years, I've uh, not really understood why that particular building has been shut down and has been closed, but the structure still stands. Um, as a product of uh, Norfolk Public Schools, um, I was a graduate of Granby High School and also a state, uh, a state champion um, as, as well, where I actually stood before you and other members um, uh, as a teenager. Um, that ended up um, taking me over to um, Old Dominion University, where I was a graduate uh, with a mass communications degree um, and a minor in facilities management. Um, and uh, it, it, you know, wasn't easy. If uh, any of you all know and understand the history um, of my area, um, I beat the odds um, in a sense. Um, without uh, the structure of uh, the Boys and Girls Club, I would have never. Uh, made it to the place that I am today and the experiences that I did go through and the things that I did see. Um, through time, I've been able to uh, um, see other lands. I, uh, after graduating um, from Old Dominion University, I ended up uh, taking my talents, my God-given talents, um, across seas to play professional basketball um, where I was able to experience a different culture. Um, just walking up here today, it kind of it shocked me to see how a lot of the children here who um, actually come to join us uh, were just amazed at uh, standing on the 11th floor um, of the city council building. Um, uh, them, uh, these children, as well as many of the kids within my neighborhood, um, have not ever and will not ever have an opportunity to actually get a chance to stand this tall, you know, and uh, stand this high and see a different perspective, uh, not just, uh, you know, from a building, but just of life in general. Um, uh, with my structure, uh, uh, pretty much coming through the Boys and Girls Club, I was able to see things. It, with having a foundation, you know, uh, of the Boys and Girls Club, uh, it's taking me to high heights and places that I would have never um, have ever dreamed. Um, it's uh, not, uh, I'm, I, I actually stand here before you today, um, if not in opposition um, of the YMCA, the proposal for the YMCA, if anything, um, to delay um, your uh, admittance and um, agreement. Um, with such proposal, just to give time to at least collect as many facts as possible. Um, it, it's it's uh, not a uh it's not, as I had mentioned before, just passing by, you know, from my time coming from, uh, you know, the Huntersville area on to uh, uh, that, that, that actual Old Dominion University's campus. So often I actually <coughs> pass a particular structure that always stands, that always have been standing or whatever. And it really doesn't make much sense to me actually to build a new building when there is already a building that already does stand. Um, and I will leave you with um, the... Um, uh, selection from uh, Proverbs uh, chapter 21, 29, it says, where there is a vision, the people shall flourish. Where there is no vision, the people will perish. So often, a lot of the children that uh, I do actually come in contact with Thank coaching you. basketball actually have, uh, um, could need that vision, could actually really truly use the Boys and Girls Club in our area. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Travis Davis. Followed by Jacqueline Jackson. Hello. Uh, my name is Travis Davis, and um, I live at 2905 Lens Avenue in Norfolk. I don't pretend to be an expert on all the details of the issue here, 
I do, however, have a small business and my family residence in Norfolk. As a chiropractor, I'm in the wellness business, as I believe the YMCA to be as well. I am sort of a one-man band, as it is right now, and as a really small business, I have limited income and resources. So when I do pay my taxes, I really feel it, but I do pay my taxes. I have practice members on both sides of the issue, and at my level of business, I cannot afford to alienate anyone, and I don't wish to here. However, as a business owner, I can see how difficult it will be to remain in business if part of my tax dollars are funding similar businesses that do not have to pay taxes, especially ones that make $45 million in this area alone, not to mention the donations that it receives. It is for this reason that I am opposed to the YMCA getting public funds for a new facility. Thank you. Thank you. Jacqueline Jackson. Followed by Selma Lawrence. Hi. My name is Jacqueline Jackson. I am at 1900 Monticello Avenue. And good evening, Mayor Frame and members of council. I was wondering what you guys were thinking about that earthquake earlier, actually. Kind of an amazing kickoff for everything. The, the words that I have to say tonight are do the right thing. How often do we sometimes, how, some, how often do we do something and later regret the decision that we've made? We say hindsight is always 2020, or, or man, if I only knew then what I know now. Well, we do know. Tonight is an opportunity to do the right thing, and that is to consider the fiscal responsibility of our beloved city of Norfolk. Especially at a time of such economic stress, we have to make even stronger considerations about our decisions and take responsibility for the ones that we make. There isn't a doggone thing wrong with the YMCA wanting to build a new facility. What is wrong is asking the city to fund nearly a million dollars of the taxpayers' money to make it happen. As Mr. Venuto very elegantly said earlier, the YMCA of Hampton Roads generated approximately $45 million annually, so how does that formula work? Voting yes tonight will very likely add to the financial crisis we are already facing in our city and in our lives. As you've been hearing, voting yes will hurt us from many angles. The Y will pay no taxes, no property tax, no real property tax, no sales tax, no, no state or federal income tax. The second item is the building that was originally on that same piece of property, and some people have already mentioned this tonight, um, previously did pay taxes and they will no longer pay taxes. The third item is other businesses will inevitably suffer due to competition and may go out of business altogether, which will affect their livelihood and the tax scenario as well. And then when the city is short on tax revenue, where will it come from? The answer is either one of two things, from, paying, from the tax paying residents of Norfolk whose taxes will go up, or the city will have to cut vital services within our own community, like education and teachers, who should be treated like royalty for leading and educating our children and providing us with better futures. Police and firefighters who put their lives on the line every day in honor of this city. Libraries and parks that enrich our lives and much more. We'll have to sacrifice the very things we need to make our lives better, safer, and more enriching all the way around. Please strongly consider all of these things before making your decision this evening. It is always the right time to do the right thing. Thank you. Right, thank you. <clears throat> Selma Lawrence. Selma Lawrence, please. Followed by Latonya Brooks. Good evening. I'm Selma Lawrence from 707 West 28th Street in Norfolk. I was raised here. I went to Maury. I went to Blair. I've traveled around to Hawaii and where have you because of what I did once I left Maury and I went to ODU. The Boys Club was very vital to the people. I graduated in 77. I don't mind telling my age. The Boys Club was very vital to the neighborhood. When they closed the neighborhood down, my sons had no place to hang at besides for on the corners where they could harass. They could went to Monroe or to the little youth centers, but too many boys hanging over there, they pushed them all out into the street. And I'm fighting to have a place for my granddaughters and grandsons to go to this close in the neighborhood. Because like I said, I live on 28th Street. 
and I don't want to be sending them all over the world with so many bad things happening. I'm also against the fact that we don't have very many jobs right now, and there's so many people that's unemployed that we're taking money to build a YMCA instead of giving people jobs to fix the Park Place Center and the Boys Club, and our teachers are losing money. We have money to give, 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 and the taxes are steady going up. But where are we going to get the money from when we're just giving them money? They get $300,000 salary, and we're killing ourselves making twenty five dollars and $30,000 a year? They're not going to let our kids go in there for $5 and $10 like the Boys Club did. It's another bill for us. It's just another bill for us eventually. They got the money. They got that kind of salary. They could have built the building and gave it to us in the Park Place area. $300,000? They could have put $100,000, put the Fix the Boys Club up and still had $200,000 to live off of and drive their limousines and eat out in their big restaurants and what have you. And a lot of y'all, y'all have seen my face because I work over at Scope. I work at the hospital. I've been working two jobs for 20-some years, 20-some years. And I've never made over $40,000 a year. And y'all are giving people $900,000, and they got all this money? These kids, these are the little kids, right? I go to Abyssinia, let me speak on that too. These are the little teeny kids. The kids, they got to go from kindergarten till they get 15, 16 year olds to be able to go and take all these other courses. Somebody's got to help now. They got to help now. I belong to the Park Place Center. This, the, I'm part of the neighborhood, the Civic Center. I belong to all of it. But I see more unemployed youth it's between the ages of 20 and 28. They're standing around riding bicycles. They can't get a job anywhere. Anywhere. Are we going to give away $900,000? The roads still haven't even been fixed. Yeah. Must be nice to have that kind of money. <clears throat> Latonya Brooks. Latonya Brooks please, followed by Nicole Nichols. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is LaTanya Brooks. I live at 432 West 35th Street. I was a member of the U.S. Navy and also the National Guard. Now I reside in Park Place. Um, $925,000 for YMCA. It's just common sense. The young gentleman here stated he knew if the kid can tell you this is a waste, then as adults, we should know. I just think that a boys and girls club or to invest in Park Place neighborhood is the better option. I just ask for you to defer it till you get all the facts and all the figures and guarantee people jobs in that facility or in the area. I have no more to say. Thank you. Nicole Nichols, <laughs> followed by Merle Rutledge. Good evening. Uh, good evening, Council. My name is Nicole Nichols, and I reside at 1326 West 26th Street in Norfolk. Um, American author C.S. Lewis once said that his work, in his work, the abolition, that we as a nation must share the blame for the consequent failing of character, and that we all as adults are responsible for educating and overseeing our youth. I have been a resident of this area for 29 years. I have experience as a mentor and a tutor in the Park Place and Lambert's Point area for about 15 years, and I've, I'm currently serving as a, um, a teacher in the Norfolk Public Schools um, system. Um, I have come to the conclusion after hearing both sides um, that at the end of the day, we must do what's best for the children. Um, my worry is the probability that the YMCA will be more costly versus the membership to the Boys and Girls Club. After speaking to a worker at the downtown Y, the fee for a family, a single family 
excuse me, the fee for a family um, with a single parent with up to four children carries the fee of $70 a month. That is on any form of public assistance or no income. This does not include additional classes and services. Those are extra. On the other hand, the Boys and Girls Club offer memberships per child at the rate of $12 per month. This includes all services. Speaking to the youth throughout the Park Place, Lambert's Point, Brambleton, and Shoe Park areas, I've heard the general response to why they're not finding ways to channel their energy um, into positive um, channels. And their general response has been, we have nothing to do. We cannot fail nor fault these children for the circumstances that they are born into. I have always taught my children and my students the universal rule that we get what you give out. And any smart person knows they should invest in their future. This rule is not limited to money, but also that we treat each other, but is also to how we treat each other. When, when you make your decision, think about the investment you are making now in the individuals and communities that we later must grow up amongst. Think about your children and your grandchildren. They have to encounter these children throughout their life living in this area. These are our future police, chefs, engineers, doctors, nurses, and et cetera, that will later service us all in some capacity. In addition, I would like to call in the question um, a lot of um, the so-called leaders in our communities, um, they have um, deals and made contracts um, with the YMCA on various services. I respect the need of income to support oneself, but those that are promised these deals can pr presently afford the rates of the YMCA. This is about the at-risk youth and low-income families and not about a small, pers a f a small number of people's personal gain. I also respect the opinions of the homeowners, but most of the low-income uh, populace <coughs> and Lambs Point areas have low-income families and at-risk youth that are renters or occupants thank, thank of low-income um, housing. Um, pop, basically, what I'm saying in a nutshell is the Y and the Boys and Girls Club offer the same services to the youth, but at the end of the day, we have to look at costs and whether they can afford to go to the Y versus the Boys and Girls thank Club. You. Thank you. Merle Rutledge, followed by Natasha, Natasha Pitchford. Hello, my name is Merle Rutledge, Savannah Park Ave, Norfolk, Virginia. Um, I'm here to talk in support for basically both and look at a situation of compromise. I know both organizations at this time frame do a whole lot for the youth in general. So I'm not going to stand up here and say anything negative in regards to any of these organizations. I understand that y'all have placed 925000 as an amount that y'all plan to use in order to help the YMCA. But maybe there can be a compromise with two organizations that look like they have every intent of seeing the best interests in our youth. Now, that's one of the number one goals that I want to look at while being here. What was people's motive and what was people's intent and what was designed to be in the best interest of a community as well as the youth. Both sides have presented great arguments and I commend them for it. I'm glad to see the youth here to actually speak up for themselves and also see the leaders here willing to go ahead and go to bat for them. This is a very proud moment, even though we have a very controversial issue. Now, I do believe that the YMCA has done a lot, and they do deserve funding. But I also believe that these leaders on the other side of the Boys Club and Girls Club deserve funding as well, so they can implement their own goals and interests, as well as the YMCA doing the same thing and see about a comparison to see what actually works and what doesn't. But hopefully, y'all can look at both sides of the issue. If y'all willing to give out 925000 to one organization, then be willing to also look at doing the same thing or splitting it into half. I believe both sides at this time frame look at the best interests of the youth. And it's finally a good thing that the council also started paying attention and spending time in hearing their arguments. 
So thank you for your time, and I hope y'all consider compromise regardless of this outcome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Tasha Pitchford, please. Followed by Francis Felton. <laughs> Francis Felton, the Sheik of Pal, is it Zenja, Zenya Pal? I'm sorry. Good evening. My name is Francis Felton. I live 515 West 26th Street, right across from the Girls and Boys Club. I've seen so many good things happen from kids that have went to the Boys and Girls Club. My girls and boys went there. The whole neighborhood went there. The whole neighborhood misses it. Please reopen it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I have called the names of everyone who signed up to, to speak. Here you are, okay. Ms. Powell. Good afternoon. I'm Nashika Power. I was signed at 613 West 37th Street, Park Place neighborhood. I was born and raised in Park Place. I was raised up in the Boys and Girls Club. Mother always forced me to go there. I don't know where I would be today if it wasn't for the Boys and Girls Club. I oppose to the Y because I fear that the income is very low. It's down. It's going to be very difficult to use, utilize the services that is provided at the Y. That's it. Thank you. Good afternoon, Council. My name is Zendra Powell. I reside at 613 West 37th Street. I am a resident of Park Place for the last 35 years, and I uphold also, I'm a registered voter. I oppose to the why because I feel that a positive facility is already in place, but is in desperate need of funding to run it. And our low income children are resulting to negative things because they just simply have nothing to do and no positive place to go. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now, I've, I've called the name of everyone who has signed up to speak. Is there anyone whose name I may have missed? Okay. Well, thank you for all of you for being here and for the very civil discourse discussion that we've had this evening. Appreciate everybody coming out. Any comments or questions? Are we ready to vote? Okay. Call the roll then. Okay. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt. Well, I'm going to make my comment uh, first. Um, you know, for me, this has never been about the Boys and Girls Club and it's never been about the YMCA. It's always been about our young people. I think the thing that discourages me the most or disappoints me the most or saddens me the most is that we got um, a community here tonight or have been for the last month or so that I've heard the young kids come down on several occasions. Then I get the adults to come down tonight and I'm as confused as I was three weeks ago as it relates to who wants what. You know, at the end of the day, it should be about our young people. It should be about providing the, the types of quality life amenities that they so deserve. The kids in Park Place uh, deserve that. Over 10 years they've been working, or have been talked about, at least since I've been on council, about finding a place somewhere for these young kids to go, somewhere where they can mature, somewhere where they could uh, uh, participate and extracurricular activities. Um, and so uh, to, that, to that point, uh, there were things that I had asked the YMCA uh, to deliver that were important to me, not because of any other reason other than I wanted to make sure that these kids at the end of the day were going to be taken care of. Now, the Civic League president came down tonight, and, you know, she had information that I wish I'd had a few weeks ago. You know, as it relates to the, the, the contract that the YMCA has made with the community, that's important. 
Now, we could talk till the cows come home, but at the end of the day, if we got something in black and white, you know, something that we could hold folk accountable uh, for at the end of the day, that's important because that's the, my big issue. So when I asked Chuck to get me a letter stating that the YMCA would be committed to the community, I got the letter. That's important. The other question that I needed answered, Dr. Wibley made sure that it was answered this evening before I walked out of the room. I almost got out of there before she could ask me the question. But more importantly, I've been working for the last seven years on this, a project similar in Broad Creek, ensuring that those families have those, type, those quality life amenities that they so deserve. So who am I to deny the Pop Place community for any economic empowerment that may come their way? And so for that, I vote aye. Mr. Protegiru? No. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Just a few comments. Um, for the last couple of months, I've been kind of sitting on the fence on this issue, and I've been, I even took some time and visited the Boys and Girls Club and walked through. Um, actually, uh, Mr. Levine uh, gave me a lot of the history that I didn't know that I did not hear from the city on this. Um, and it's an interesting building. I see the potential there. Um, it, it's, a, um, it, it's rough, though. Um, it needs a lot of work. And um, there's a lot of people who keep on referring to it as the Boys and Girls Club, but it was the Boys and Girls Club that left Park Place. And so it, it's now uh, a building that's sitting there with a private owner uh, looking for a way to develop it um, and turn it into something good. And uh, I've, on both sides, I've been saying, why can't Park Place have both? If this argument was in East Ocean View, which is my, my toughest community and my ward, they, I, I don't think there'd be an argument. Everybody would be celebrating the fact that somebody wants to invest in the neighborhood and, and, and build and have economic development. In fact, maybe the Y will come down to Ocean View. We, we don't have anything like that down there. Um, and, and I hope that down the road, that um, the city will work with the owners of the Boys and Girls Club, the former Boys and Girls Club, and find a way to make that project work as well. So this morning, I didn't have a, my mind made up, but I did, a, uh, as I usually do when I have tough decisions, whether it's a budget decision at home um, or a decision professionally, I made a plus and minuses list. Um, and at the end of the day, um, I can only see that the why this issue, this will bring a lot of potential for this neighborhood. It will bring possibly business and economic development. But that goes without saying that I am troubled and very troubled with the city of Norfolk and the way that we conduct business when it comes to these type of deals. That land is only worth $702,000. I cannot understand why we are paying as much as we are for that land. I asked a couple, uh, almost a year ago for about $250,000 to open up a boat ramp in my ward that was closed, and that's about $250,000 difference. It's just disturbing to me that we don't make the best choices sometimes, but I don't want to penalize the Park Place community for that decision. They have obviously asked for this. The Civic League has been working on this, and I hope that down the road, that they will also work with the owners of the former Boys and Girls Club and try to make that project work as well. We do have a deficit with parks and recs in our city. We need to find more activities for our youth. And I just think that the Y is gonna add some more activities for youth. Um, and so I'm voting aye. Dr. Wibley. <clears throat> this was never about the Y versus the Boys Club. This, the Boys Club, we've been working on this for probably four years, and it's only recently that even interest in, in reopening the issue of the Boys and Girls Club has surfaced. What we're here today is to talk about whether or not we as a council agree to let the Park Place neighborhood make a decision on how to spend the money that had been leveraged to their neighborhood over the past two budget cycles. We've spent three years <coughs> talking with the Y, negotiating the agreement that Anthony 
brought up today to make sure that this could be the best potential. How did $900,000 come into this? Because Mr. Batten and his foundation agreed to donate the money and to raise the funds upwards of $13 million of private money into this project with the consideration that the city agreed to use that $900,000 to show good faith. There aren't many deals that we as a city have gotten that have enabled us to leverage $900,000 that had been designated over two years to Park Place to get $13 million in return of private money into our neighborhoods. Now, I would love to open up the Boys Club. I think every one of us on this council hears the fact that we do not have enough facilities for our children. But it'd be a shame for us not to accept the positive ad advantages of this. And I would really personally like to thank all the Civic League members of all of these communities for their hard work and dedication in making sure this proposal worked for the citizens of Park Place. I heartily vote aye. Ms. Williams. I want to thank everybody who came out today on both sides of the issue. I also want to thank the citizens of Park Place, the members of the Civic League, for all of their hard work that started long before I took office. I believe that the YMCA will bring good things to the neighborhood of Park Place and to the residents of Park Place. And for all of the citizens who are here today who are not involved with the Park Place Civic League and who are not involved in the vision and engagement process, I encourage you to get involved, to get involved in the organized representation for your neighborhood in the Park Place Civic League. But I do, again, I believe that the Y will be a good thing towards making Park Place a neighborhood of choice. And with that, I vote aye. Mr. Wynn? I would just like to echo what uh, both Dr. Wibley and Angela have said, and Don Hester before them. They spent years with this community, envisioning processes, Park Place, uh, Civic Leagues, figuring out how they would want to best invest the funds we have and we've made available to them over the last few years. This is what they came up with unanimously with the group that they wanted to do this. Uh, I know we're taking off the tax roll. I think the economic development that will come around this project as we build back up this blighted area will more than offset that. The human capital investment that we're making, you can't put a price on that. Uh, and I can tell any of you that are doubters, as a businessman, I've been in this city 41 years in business, I can assure you that the mission that the Batten family has put out for the, how this money is going to be used, and if, the, if they say that they're going to take care of the people that need, and if the YMCA says it, I've not ever known them to break their word since I've been in business, either group, and I'll tell you they're going to do exactly what they say. I vote aye. Mr. Frame? Yeah, <clears throat> just a couple of comments. Um, I don't know what the property was actually either assessed or appraised at back when the contract to purchase it was was, uh, was actually signed, probably more than it is today. Um, <clears throat> but I do know that the city on any numerous occasions, as recently as in Denby Park, uh, paid more than the assessed or appraised value to clear out some blight in our neighborhood. We don't always make the, the best deals when the city is trying to do something good, but sometimes you think that if you pay a little more, you know, it's you get value, and that's what um, what we did here. Actually, we didn't negotiate the, pro the purchase of this property, and um, someone else did. So um, it's, I'd like to have paid a half million for it, <laughs> but you know, the, the price was nine and a quarter. That was a negotiated price, a little more than we wanted. Probably the guy that sold it to us probably paid a little less than he, that probably got a little less than he wanted. But um, in, in any event, um, what it, as Dr. Wibley said, this is going to leverage a great 
a great investment in Park Place. Um, millions of dollars of money that will, will flow. The thing I keep coming back to, I mean, I, I think the Y will be a good amenity. Um, but what I'm really focused on is this early childhood education center. We couldn't do that ourselves in the city, and, and there are going to be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of children who are going to benefit from this in an area of our city that really could use it and could use a, I mean, this will be, and the Battens have never, I mean, they've been a great benefactor of this city uh, for, for decades and decades and decades, and um, they, they do what they say they're going to do. And this is going to be a facility that everyone will be proud of and, and children will, will profit from. Um, but, and this doesn't, this doesn't bring an end to this. I mean, all of our work in progress, all of our work over time in Park Place has been a work in progress. And the, the needs of the children in, in Park Place and the families um, will be there after this Y uh, is opened. It's not going to serve all of that. We, we think it's two separate issues. If we need to find other ways to deal, to, to provide services to the children of Park Place, we're going to keep working at it. We're going to work at it, you know, daily and weekly, just like Dr. Wibley and others have been doing for some, some period of time now. So I just see this as one really good, good step forward. So I vote on it. Okay, that concludes the vote on all of this. Again, thanks uh, to all of you for coming down. We appreciate uh, all of your help. Guy. Okay. Ongoing. Yeah. 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 I'm not working fast enough. It's been a year now. Oh, go to the freaking airport authority and go get money. R2. They owe it to us. Let's go. R R2, please. So an There's an ordinance permitting Vernon M. Fareed to encroach into the right of way at 533-532 West 35th Street, Never gooseneck lighting. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance is adopted. Perfect. It's <coughs> Mr. Jordan, you don't need to speak to you. I mean, we've got you down here for R2, but we're prepared to support. Your proponent, okay. <laughs> Mr. Protegiru? Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Wynn? Aye. Frame? Aye. R3? <laughs> An ordinance to revoke the, uh, to revoke the permission to encroach mm -hmm. granite to Kate's Corner LLC. <laughs> Okay. By ordinance number 44252, and to grant permission to 102 Cates Corner LLC, the owner of the property located at 320 East 41st Street, to encroach into the city right of way at 41st Street with a driveway and a pier. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Webley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Yeah. Mr. Frame? Aye. R4? An ordinance accepting the dedication of a perpetual sidewalk easement by the American Heart Association and approving the terms of the deed of easement. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. William? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R5. An ordinance approving the acquisition of a temporary construction easement over certain property owned by Richard B. and Evelyn S. Reynolds and, and authorizing the city manager to accept the easement on behalf of the city. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R6. An ordinance approving the acquisition of a temporary construction easement over certain property owned by Emily J. Smoke and authorizing the city manager to accept the easement on behalf of the city. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R7. An ordinance accepting a $16,040 grant award from the Virginia Department of Emergency Management 
Fiscal year 2010 Department of Homeland Security grant program and appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of the funds for the purchase of a license plate reader for the Norfolk Police Department to enhance port security. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R8? An ordinance accepting grant funds in the amount of $337,050 from the Virginia Department of Criminal Justice Services for the continuation of the Victim Witness Assistance Program, authorizing the employment of nine persons in the Victim Witness Assistance Program and providing funds for their salaries and benefits and appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of the funds for the program. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegero? I want to note that uh, Greg Underwood, our Commonwealth Attorney, is here today. and. Uh, Dealing with Greg's <clears throat> office, usually often Greg from the other side, I have to say that uh, his people do an excellent job uh, with victim witness. Probably one of the best that I have ever seen uh, in the many courtrooms that I go to and the many prosecutors that I'm uh, often uh, having matters with. And uh, it's my privilege that I would vote aye on this. You do a great job, Greg. Mr. Riddick? I vote aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? No, I'm the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> aye. Are you down here for that, Mr. Underwood? Is that what you're yeah. Pardon me, sir? Are you down here for this? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Okay. Did you think it's going to be close, Greg? Okay. Pardon me? Oh. You think it's going to be close? No. <laughs> That's all right. Sorry. I, I want to personally thank the council for the okay. support, Mr. Sure. City Manager. Okay. You've been steadfast in your support, and you've been consistent. Thank you very much. Thank you. R9, please. An ordinance approving the lease of certain property located at 707 and 711 through 713 Granby Street by the City of Norfolk for a five-year term with an additional five one-year term renewal option and authorizing the City Manager to, to negotiate and execute a lease agreement on behalf of the City. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R10? An ordinance approving a license agreement with Norfolk Rowing Center, Inc., Hagen Design, and Cooper's Landscape Management for paving, landscaping, and turf restoration at the Norfolk Rowing Center. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R11. An ordinance approving right of entry agreements with the General Douglas MacArthur Foundation. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R12. An ordinance authorizing the purchase from GPMC Properties LLC of certain property located in the City of Norfolk for the sum of $632,000, approving the terms and conditions of the purchase and sale agreement and authorizing the expenditure of the sum of up to $647,000 from funds heretofore appropriated to pay, pay for the purchase price and the other transaction costs. <coughs> Just say, <coughs> excuse me, Rebecca Luce, please. <coughs> Pardon me. Dude, I feel like I need to do the big three minutes. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm Rebecca Luce, 409 San Antonio Boulevard. Okay. I even went over to my neighbor's house and edged his lawn on the corner of, of San Antonio and Galveston. Hey, egged it or edged it? Edged. Come on now. Come on now. You know better. You can go by and look. It's all pretty and edged because he was sick. But anyway, I want to thank each and every one of you for all the hard work and the dedication that you put in to help in our neighborhood. I truly do appreciate it, and so do my neighbors. Thank you. There's even a dead tree they're going to take down for you, too, across the street, Rebecca. Thank you. But, Becky, nobody worked harder than you did. Absolutely. It was a joint That's project, true. and I thank everyone. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. You can do your happy okay. dance. I guess that means you're in favor, right, Rebecca? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Yep. Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R13. An ordinance authorizing the purchase from GPMC Properties LLC at all of certain property located in the city of Norfolk for the sum of $2,054,000, approving the terms and conditions of the purchase and sale agreement and authorizing the expenditure of the sum of $2,069,000 from funds heretofore appropriated to pay the purchase price and the other transaction costs. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegero? And I, you know, Rebecca, I appreciate what you said, but I think we also need to, uh, and just, and I've said it before, and it was uh, 
office, thank the manager and his office for really getting on this. Uh, Stanley, Marcus, you've done a great job with this, and I really appreciate what you've done. This is uh, done a terrific job in getting the price uh, appropriate for the taxpayers of the city of Alpha to make this thing work. Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? I just want to echo what Councilman Protegera just said because this is the kind of deal and business that the city should be doing and investing in our neighborhoods um, for the right price. Aye. Dr. Wibley? Park Place was the right price, too. Come on. We'll talk later. Yeah, well, you bet. <laughs> I voted for it. So get over it. Is William? Yeah. It's not for me. <laughs> hey, Wes. People had to talk for an I vote. I know. <laughs> I know. Aye. Okay. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Um, Frame? Uh, I vote aye, but I also want to thank the, the manager. He made it a priority to get this done, and we got it at the right price. Right. Yeah, so thank you. Okay, R14. An ordinance granting a special exception to operate an entertainment establishment on property located at 1570 North Military Highway. By 4 0 vote, Planning Commission recommends approval. <clears throat> Mr. Is it Hermerka? Is the proponent? Are you here, Jeff? Okay, Jeff. I think we're okay. Go ahead. Roll. Spence with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R15. An ordinance accepting $100,000 in USDA program reimbursement funding for fiscal year July 1, 2011 through June 30, 2012 from the Virginia Department of Juvenile Justice for the USDA School Nutrition Breakfast, Lunch, and Special Milk Program for the food service operation at the Norfolk Juvenile Detention Center <coughs> and authorizing the expenditure of the funds for the program at the Juvenile Detention Center. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R16? An ordinance granting a special exception to permit the sale of alcoholic beverages for off-premises consumption on property located at 521 West 25th Street and by 4-0 vote planning commission recommends approval. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R16-8. <laughs> An ordinance granting a special exception to permit off-lot parking on property located at 600 West 25th Street. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R17. An ordinance granting a special exception to permit the operation of an eating and drinking establishment on property located at 723 West 21st Street. By 4-0 vote, Planning Commission recommends approval. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Webley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R18, Breck. An ordinance granting funds in the amount of $1,080,457 from the Virginia Department of Criminal Justice Services for the Norfolk Criminal Justice Services Agency, which includes the pretrial services and adult community supervision divisions, appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of the funds for the agency, authorizing the expenditure of $55,100 in local funds for the agency, and authorizing the employment of 22 persons with the agency and providing funds for their salaries and benefits. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. What are you, R19? Mm -hmm. An ordinance accepting a grant of the amount of $30,682 from the Virginia Department of Criminal Justice Services for the Norfolk Court Appointed Special Advocate Program for fiscal year 2012, appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of the grant funds for the program authorizing the expenditure of $10,227 in city matching funds and funding a special project employee position for the program director for fiscal year 2012. <coughs> Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R20. An ordinance accepting $639,899 in funding from the Commonwealth of Virginia Department of Juvenile Justice for fiscal year 2012 in <coughs> support of the Virginia Juvenile Community Crime Control Act program, appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of funds and authorizing the expenditure of $639,899 in local cash matching funds for total program funding of <coughs> $1,279,798 to be administered by the city's Department of Human Services. 
dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Yeah. Bertaziru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? <coughs> Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. That's all I have, Mr. President. Okay, that concludes the formal portion of tonight's agenda. Thank you.